Hey everybody, this is Coulter with GoFab CNC. Today I'm going to show you guys how to operate your CNC plasma table. The first thing we're going to have to do is come over to the brain box over here. So if you'll follow me, we're going to turn it on. It'll just be this little black switch down here on the right hand side of your box. You'll flip that up. You'll see that your fan will light up red and now your box is on. Then you need to turn your tablet on and open up the GoFab CNC app. Once you open the app up, it'll already be trying to communicate with the Bluetooth. Should connect fairly quickly. There you go. It says table needs to be homed. Would you like to home now? You press yes and the table begins the homing process. You do have to do the homing process because if you don't, the table has no idea where it's at or how big it is. This is how it sets its limits on where to go. And the way it stops, it's got a limit switch on the back of the X and on the back of the arms. They're little plastic limit switches, so that's why it moves so slow. It doesn't want to smash them. Now, once it reaches the back and you can move the table around, it moves a lot quicker. There we go. Your table is homed. Your tablet screen should look like this. Nothing on it. Now we're going to go over the controls. How do you get to the controls? This blue button right here has a little controller in it with arrows pointing in each direction. Go ahead and click that and you'll see a bunch of different buttons. Now the first things we have are the small movements for the X and Y on the left hand side. In the middle we have the full movements and on the right we have the small movements for the Z which is just up and down. First thing we're going to go over though is the small movements for the X and Y. So if you will follow me over to the X. Let's say I want to go to the left. I press it once. That right there is 500 steps to the left. And how you know is in the middle there's a gray button with white numbers in it that says X500. These are NEMA 23 stepper motors so that is just the amount of steps that it takes. So if I press it once more it'll go to 2000. Press left you'll notice the how far it moves significantly larger. If you press it one more time it'll go to 1. If I try to go to left you cannot even see the table move. The movement's just so small. I'll press it one more time and go to 10 move it to the left and it's barely moving. You might not be able to see it in the video because the movement is still so small. If I press it one more time it'll go to 100. That's a little bit better. You can see that. It's still pretty small though. You can make sure you get accurate lineups. Press it one more time. Now it's at 500. 500 is the default setting. So every time you turn the box off and back on that's what the tablet is automatically going to set itself to. Next we're going to go over the small movements for your Z which is just up and down. It's the same thing if you press the middle button it changes how far it moves so if you tap it once 2000, tap it again it will go to 1 which again you can't see, 10, barely, 100, and then 500. 500 still being the default. Next we have your full movements right here. Now the way these arrows are orientated is if you were standing at the front of the table. So let's go ahead and move to the front of the table. And now let's say I want to move the X and the Y all the way to the front left. I'll press this front left button right here. And it's going to go all the way to the front and to the left until it reaches its limit. You'll notice the X momentarily will do a pause that lets you know it reached its limit. Now the Y is going to come all the way to the front until it reaches its limit. Boom. Now it's at the front and let's say you want to move it to the center of the table. You just press the button that would be the right, assuming you know what the right is, and then you press stop. You do not have to let the table go wherever it wants when you press these movements. You are able to stop it with this stop button right here. So if I want to let it go to the back, stop it once it gets to the center, I can just do that. So you can just sit here and just press them all at once, you know, just sit there and move it a bunch. It's not going to mess anything up. Now you see how fluid it is. Now if I go to the small movements, it moves a lot slower. These are for pinpointing where you want to start. So at the beginning, how we did the homing process, the home is not your start point. The start point is wherever you want to be. So if I want to start right there, I can start right there. If I want to bring it to the front and start at the front, I can start at the front. All that matters is where you set it. So this is a brand new table. I don't want to cut on it. So I'm going to go ahead 
and just swap it out and put the pen attachment on. You do have to put the pen attachment on a certain way. So if you look at it, you'll notice there are two screws. Now this bottom screw lines up with the surface limit switch right here and this top screw lines up with this little hole right here as a guide. The reason this has to be pressed is this is what tells your Z to move up and down. Right now it's not being pressed. Your Z is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to do anything. So when I put it on, I kind of go at an angle and I tilt it down and I slowly come up. Once I hear that limit switch click, you can just let it go and straighten it out. Go ahead and take the cap off and let's go back over here to the tablet. All you gotta do is exit out of here. For you guys, you guys will have files already uploaded on the tablet, so you'll just have to tap the screen, select what file you want right here, and upload it. But for us, this is a brand new table. As I said before, I'm gonna use a sample cut. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go to the settings button right here with the white gear inside a red circle. Press that, go to the bottom right, press sample cut files. It'll just be a square and a circle, so I'm just gonna use the square. I'll press use, it pulls it up, you can see it. And in the bottom right, you see a little gray button that has an arrow inside of it. You have to press that to send it to the table. Now that I've sent it, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that our plasma is off since I took the torch off. Plasma's off. Now I gotta go ahead and come in and set it to where I wanna start. So like I said, you can start wherever you want. Now if I wanna bring it forward, I'll bring it forward a little bit and stop it. And I wanna start cutting right there, I'll press set program start. It'll be this red button right here in the bottom left corner. Once you press that, it'll pop up on the screen saying program zero start with a green check. And it'll show the torch right there. So let's say I want to move it again. You see the torch went off screen. Once I press set program start again, it's going to zero it back out on the file. But now that is the new start point wherever I set it at. Let me exit out of here and go ahead and press play. Make sure plasma's off, find surface on. What that just was, was a dry run of a file. The table thought it was cutting, but I had turned the plasma off, so it obviously wasn't cutting anything. There are some modifications you can do to files on the tablet. You do not make files on the tablet, but you can make slight modifications. And how you do that is you'll come to this mouse button right here. You'll click that, it'll already be in the Modify tab. Now the first option you have is gonna be a cross with arrows pointing in each direction. That is how you move a file around. The second option you have is the X with arrows pointing in each direction. And once you select that, that is how you make a file bigger or smaller. And every time you make any kind of modification, whether you move it around or make it bigger, you do have to resend it to the table. The next option we have is rotating it. Now you can use two fingers like I do just because I think it's cool. or you can come over here to where it says degrees and 90, press the 90, and input your own value. Now all I'm gonna do is just put 35, press set, and you use these arrows right here to rotate it 35 degrees. Now again, every time you move it, you do have to resend it to the table so then the table knows what it's doing. So right now, I just wanna start cutting right here, and again, I have to come into the movements, move it away from the square I'd already drawn out, press set program start. Once I've done that, I can exit out of here, send it to the table, press play, make sure plasma is still off, and then it'll begin drawing it out. Next option we have is the table visible option and it'll be in the section where it has an, a magnifying glass up at the top. So you'll click that, which is your overview. So once you press table visible, you'll actually be able to see the table on the main screen. So these right here would be your rails. This would be your arm. If you zoom in, this right here is your torch. 
if you zoom in a little bit farther into this blue highlighted circle, you'll see that there are red lines that meet in an X, and that is where the tip of your torch is going to be, or in our case, the tip of our pen attachment. And you'll see right below where table visible is, you have measurements are in millimeters. If you click that, now your measurements are in inches. You can actually see the difference in the squares in the background. Default measurements are in millimeters, so you'd have to manually change that. Next option we have is this metal beam button right here. This is how you select your material and what type of metal you're going to be cutting. So at the top it says metal. We have raw steel iron, galvanized, stainless, and aluminum. And depending on the thickness of the gauge of metal you're going to be cutting, it's going to recommend a tip size to you amps and air. So right now for 28 gauge it recommends a 1.0 tip, 35 amps, and 65 psi. If I was to press to the left it'll go to 1 inch gauge, recommends a 1.3 tip at 80 amps, and 65 psi. And let me flip through these because as you go the tip size will change. Right there, 3 8 gauge recommends a 1.2 tip, still 80 amps, and 65 psi. Now 7 gauge it recommends a 1.1 and at 75 amps with 65 psi and as you flip through those it'll continue to change. Right down here you have cut priority. Default will be quality which is what we use all the time. We recommend that to everybody as well but if you don't care about how much flag is produced you can press speed and it'll perform the cut a lot faster. Again quality is the default. Now if you click this button right here this is how you open up your plasma. So this is where you see me come before to turn the plasma off. If you want to turn it back on all you have to do is turn plasma back on. Then we have these options right down here. This straight line is for flat material. This is basically all of these are warnings to the table letting you know what kind of metal it's going to be cutting and seeing if it should watch out for warps. And it just lets the THC know what it's going to be doing. The middle option is for warped material. The last option is for corrugated. It is, the THC is still active with the flat line, but it's a little bit more active with the warp and it's very active with the corrugated. The next option that we have is the edit cut settings. Now this is where you come and if you want to change anything in here like the amount of air that's going to the table or the amount of amps, pierce delay, plunge height, ignite height, cut width, feed rate, and cut height, this is where you come to change it. Now you'll notice you can't change anything right now. And that's because it is set for the default values up here in the top right corner. So if I want to change them, first I'd have to come in, unclick that box, and then I can select one of these values and I can put whatever I want. Now whatever I set in here is only going to be set for whatever metal that I have up at the top. And so you'll see it does tell you aluminum, 7 gauge, 1.1. So whatever I set in here and I press set, it's only going to be for 7 gauge aluminum. If I was to come over and go to 8 gauge, then go back to edit cut settings it would still be in the default values it's just not locked and if i ever if you ever don't want to keep the settings that you like or you think that you figured out something better and you want to restart you can always go back to the seven gauge aluminum edit cut settings and press use default values and it'll reprogram it to what we programmed it for next we have the duplicate button which is back in the modify tab and it's this little button right up here with two squares with a plus sign and the white one. You can press that and it'll duplicate the file that you have loaded up. You can press it as many times as you want as long as it doesn't go off the table, which it'll show you if you have your table visible. So right here, it currently went off the table. The farthest it this will cut is to this right here. It'll do this square, but then it'll only get right there. So it'll only do this section. And go back and zoom out. And how you delete it is you just press this X. Boop, boop, boop. All right, everybody, so we're over here at our fabrication shop now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you guys a sample cut of something that we actually use in our production line. It's a piece to our Z. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this torch and I'm gonna line it up with this bottom left-hand corner right there. So let me go ahead and put the torch all the way as close as I can to the metal before it touches. And then go ahead and just line it up that should be good right there. Set program start. Everything's good. Raw steel iron, 14 gauge, plasma's on. Let's go ahead. And 
here we go guys let's take a look at these edges real quick make sure they're nice and smooth there we go all right everybody that's our gofab cnc table you guys have a good one <laughs>